Platform Next 2024 with my friend Omer from CoPrint. Hey buddy, dude, hey. it's been, it's, it's been a year. And I wanna give people a little refresher because last year yeah. we talked. Yes, we some did. Some really cool stuff. You had your Kickstarter, you had multicolor 3D printing, you were kind of getting rolling. What has happened since that? Well, it, it doesn't feel like one year first, <laughs> but it's really been a one year. So uh, from then, I think uh, so much things changed. We first finished the Kickstarter. Awesome, Kickstarter's done. And then the more stress came out, of course, because of course. they... It, well, then you got to ship stuff. Exactly. So after that, we had to change several stuff on the production. Okay. Because like people will remember our first product, Multifilament Module, which was our first Kickstarter product. We did everything in our home country, in Turkey. Uh, we basically did all the assembling, all spare parts came to Turkey. We did all the testing in Turkey and then we shipped the products. But the costs to bring products to Turkey increased tremendously. Yeah. Like it was increasing size. So we wanted to go to the heart of manufacturing, to China. Oh, so you went to Shenzhen? Yes, we went to Shenzhen. Ooh, okay. And we want, first we wanted to make the quality will remain the same, but we had more resources to put everything in while increasing the quality and the resources we had. Okay, so what you had before, if I remember right, was 3D printed parts. Exactly. Which is fine. Yeah. Prototyping some finished yeah. product, it gets your product to yeah. market faster, yeah, yeah. right? That's correct. But since then, obviously, going to Shenzhen yeah. and getting some manufacturing behind it, exactly. what were you able to do? We had to visit a lot of facilities, a lot of good brands to increase our capacity in logistics, mm -hmm. to carry out the same quality, to reduce the costs, not for co-print, but for people to find out a good pricing for the products, you know? Okay, so then what, what did Shenzhen do for CoPrint to enable you to reduce costs? Well, we arranged with a facility there, and the facility did injection molding for us. We made sure that the mold is fine, yeah. the PCB cards are done. While our team in, back in Turkey, in Istanbul, were doing the design for the products, we make sure that the production is going in the parallel in the China. First, we made... You had a lot going on. We made a, like, a lot of going on. Uh, there's so much stuff. Finally, we have done everything in a particular way. We have settled down the facility. We have arranged the uh, team to give proper testings, proper certifications, and so on. And then we started the manufacturing. There were some delays, and that delays actually caused us to change some specific stuff on our design, increase our capabilities, the compatibilities with other printers as well. So wait, you went to Shenzhen and you actually got a, a facility to do some manufacturing yeah. for you, injection molding, yeah. and you brought costs down, but yeah. you also increased capabilities. Exactly, we had that's to. That's cool. We had to. Well, sure, like, but that's great that exactly. you did. Exactly. Delays have some negative aspects, yeah. but some positive aspects for us as well. When you tell people on Kickstarter that who've backed a project that there's yeah. delays, like people don't t aren't yeah. necessarily they don't take that well yeah. all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. How was feedback for the delays for the people that backed your project? Well, the thing is that for co-prints, while maintaining the production, we had to maintain trust because the first feedbacks was not about, okay, delay is happening, that's cool. So the thing we had to do first was to show everything clearly open to people that co-print exists. We made a first Kickstarter successfully and we distributed the products and you can find it on sales channels. Within that 12 months that we initially established since the last Form Next, yeah. you've actually increased production and yep. increased capabilities yep. and you've shipped your Kickstarter. Exactly. Like this is a product now. People yep. can purchase this yep. as a product, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. That's, dude, that's huge. Like, good job. Yep. Nailed it. Well, now, now that you have a product, because people are going to want to know, like yep. there's some meat on the bone here. Like, for example, the KCM, which is this right yes. here. We talked about it last time, but we actually didn't get to see it working. That's right. Now this is it, it's working and making these amazing models. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the KCM because this is the first time we're seeing it working. Yeah. We have the KCM here that communicates with Clipper. You can use it remotely from your main sale. You can just connect your device and have multicolor prints in different brands, different 3D printers. Okay. It's a very flexible model and then we had to increase the capabilities of the KCM, so the speed increases, the communication between the motors, and our chroma head increases so they don't stuck. When we, last year when we talked, yeah. the, the tool head, the KCM, everything was specced for something, yeah. but in the development in that 12 months, you have found that with these faster machines, yeah. you actually had to make changes to the KCM, the motor, the chroma set, 
everything just to be able to keep up with the technology exactly. at, at its pace, right? Exactly. Wow. Because okay. the printers evolved in the last 12 months that we were oh, yeah. discussing at. Well, I see when it's doing the model part, like it's, yeah. it's moving. It's moving. Yeah. We had to adapt and we had to change stuff okay. to catch up with today's printer's acceleration and the speed. For your tool head now, with the high speed machines yeah. going, people are going to want to know what's yeah. the flow rate that yeah. you can achieve. What is that? It's 24 cubic meters. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's good. Well now, okay, so we've covered, you've shipped your Kickstarter. Yeah. You have a product now. Yep. You've updated your KCM, the chroma set, and the motors, and the hot end in order to print faster. You just said 24 cubic millimeters yep. per second, which is great. You've done something amazing as well since then, and it's showcased right here. You've partnered with Creality. Yes. How is that going? Well, we have been discussing with Creality for a while. We wanted to actually show them what our products can do in their machines because like we were using Creality machines since we started that business. Yeah, exactly. We know what they are capable of, why people are using these machines and we wanted to fill their gap on multi-material or multi-color uh, printing with our product set. And once we visit that China, we had a chance to talk with them personally and we had the chance to show them our products, what they can achieve. Oh, they must have loved having that personal connection exactly. established. Because their engineers were there, everyone had a chance to play and like basically touch the product and see what they can achieve from That's there. That's cool. You know, they have been releasing their Neve 3D printer that has the multicolor capability, but there are tons of 3D printers they have which hasn't uh, multicolor capabilities. So <laughs> that's where we came in. That's cool. And their 3B3 Plus right there is one of the first products we made cooperation with Creality. Oh, okay. And this is the beginning of the partnership and the good thing is that, yes, our products are perfect fit for that machine. Yeah. But we had to make it more user friendly. <laughs> That's always what you got to do, exactly. right? Exactly. You're dealing with consumers that need that ease of use. They want a UI that makes sense yes. and they want the UX to flow well. Exactly. Was there anything specific that you did or did you just kind of refine and like round the edges a bit? Yeah. So the main part here is that if you want to make it more user friendly, that people can actually achieve what they achieved with their standard 3D printer, you have to make some configurations with the manufacturer. Uh, and okay. right there, the Creality is the manufacturer of the 3D printer, right? So first thing we did was to integrate their software with our system. Okay. So once you plug the KCM to the 3D printer, the printer software acknowledge the co-print is now connected and ready to function. It's just, okay, so there's no sort of firmware update that needs to happen. It's just you plug it in and you're good to go. Exactly. If a user has the Creal TV 3 Plus machine on his home, they just have to refresh their own Creal OS from the firmware right there. Oh, okay. And then it acknowledges co-print Simple things, simple, simple, simple steps in simple. order to get this going. Exactly. Well, now that, now that it's shipped, yeah. people have it in their hands. What are some of the cool models you've seen that people have made using the co-print system? Well, actually, this model right there. Can standing, I hold it up? Yeah, of course. Actually, it was one of the models that look at that catched up because you know the from next was like right there after we started the yeah. shipments. So there are a few people who started to share their printing experience with us. So that was one of the models that has been popular nowadays. And I like it. Yeah, some of our users just made it happen. Well, great we, demonstration too yeah. because you've got tight tolerance for yep. pieces, yep. multiple filaments, yep. multiple colors, yep. like, and it's, and it's nice. Exactly. Like it's fun, yeah. it's, it's flowy. It, yep. Oh, that's cool. There have been some big prints we made like unique for the form next. Take well, go get one, come <laughs> yeah. on, bring it over here. Yeah, let's talk about it. Can I, here, I'll hold one end, you hold the other. Look at that boat. Okay, so this was made using Co-print, co right? Yeah, exactly. Look at that. Okay, tell me about it. Yes, this is uh, actually... Because this is big. This is big. And this is actually a unique model designed by our team. And this is oh. the city ferry line in Istanbul. You know, in Istanbul, we have Bosporus mm -hmm. going from Asia to Europe. The right. bridge connect two contents to itself. Oh. Okay, and, and so this is one of them. This is one of them. This is oh. one of the oldest city ferry lines of Istanbul. And so we wanted to take our prints to our origins. Let's... Kind That's of great! Use 3D printing as to commerce Istanbul as well. Why not? Why not? Oh, this is cool. And I like that. It really yeah. brings a touch of home exactly. to a global audience. Exactly. Being able to, like, now you can find more things in Istanbul and, yep. and, and model them and yep. then print them in the exactly. multicolor system that you have. Omer, this has been 
an amazing walkthrough, but people are going to have questions, they always do, and they'll write comments, but really, where can they go to find out more about the Coprint system? Look at that camera and let them know. Well, you, guys, you can reach Coprint always at coprint3d.com and you can reach to our info section at info at coprint3d.com. You can always ask questions, you can always share your opinions, you can reach out to our social media channels, and of course you can check out our store for more. You'll answer the emails personally, right? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Always. Well, you know, thanks for making it this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and multicolor print all the things, right? Yeah, yeah. Multicolor all the things. Yeah, all the things. And as always, high five. You want one? Hey, you didn't even wreck the boat. Ha <laughs> ha!